But now let me just get back and make a couple final comments about the, um, the 504 program, which is I know when some of you asked me to come out today where you really wanted to focus uh, and why uh, that's important. We need to keep businesses that do own the properties uh, that they're in staying in those properties. We, do, we don't need to be displacing businesses uh, in a fragile recovery. And so I was very glad to see that we were able to get this overall lending bill that again will leverage uh, $30 billion to up to $300 billion of lending to small businesses, uh, but also include the 504 piece so people will have the opportunity to refinance uh, in existing properties uh, that they already own. Um, and maybe what we should just do is open it up to questions then. And do, if any of you who are at the community banks would like to come up and join me, uh, you're welcome, or you can take questions from where you are. Yeah. At uh, one of your previous conferences up north I went to, and you can grow up in groups, the SBA guy was there, Chuck, I think his name was. Uh, he said his biggest problem is the banks don't have to write the 504 programs. It's a lot of paperwork. He says, we can have it out there, but we can't make them write them. And it still seems to be an issue. He's getting the 504 down to the private sector, to the commercial industries they need it, because we can't get the banks to write these programs, even though they're available. I think that's true. Uh, I think what you're going to see with this new bill, because that was done even before we got this passed, is there is going to be a greater receptivity of the community banks to participate. And there's a lot of work being done to make it easier uh, to work through these programs. Are there any bankers who want to comment on that? Yes. The fact is that, that banks will have a lot more money to lend with substantial inducements to, to lend it to small businesses under the Small Business Lending Fund. Yes. There's $30 billion there for community banks. Um, and many banks don't have a good idea about how to do small business lending. Many banks in the Chicago area, community banks, which is what this bill is aimed at, have been commercial real estate lending over the past few years. Um, so I think a lot of these programs, SBA, various other programs, are going to get, if, if not renewed interest, new interest yes. from the banks once they learn how to do it because the inducement for the banks to do small business lending is that the investment that the government makes, the rate on that investment goes down. Banks have to pay less on that to the extent that their small business lending goes up from their existing baseline. Right. And the two things are complementary because there are a number of community banks I've heard from, it's not that they don't want to lend to small businesses, it's that because of the overexposure that too many banks have had to the commercial real estate market, because of the anticipated write downs that they're gonna to have to take on their books as these short term loans are coming due and they know the values of the properties aren't gonna be back up, they don't have enough of a capital cushion to be out doing a lot of small business lending. So the combination of being able to refi some of those commercial real estate loans and exposure through the 504, number one, strengthens their balance sheet combined with the incentives that based on the level of lending they do, the better rate they get um, on small business lending, I think together are very complementary. Well, so I was just going to um, accentuate the point on, on the 504, you mentioned the 40% of the things put out there. <laughs> What's really key is that the rate that the, you're getting that 40% at. Speak the, a little louder, sir. I'm sorry. 50% is going to be the bank rate, and that 40% is going to be much lower rate. Yeah, okay. well, it'll be within the four range right now. So you're getting not only the 40%, but you're getting it at a, much, uh, at a better rate than the bank can offer. That's a really good point. Do you want to come up and make that to everyone more clearly? Can you? Yeah, because honestly, the, the bankers understand even better than I do about how it's really two loans if you do the 504. Yeah. Um, and it, that would be great to share that, please. Yeah, it, it, obviously, and not obviously, but for those who don't know, that 40% is coming from the government. You're going to make the two, one payment to the bank, one payment to the, uh, the SBA, if you will, the 504 CDC, and that rate is going to be a lot less, say, just for a number that are, our rate is 6.5. Their rate now, uh, the uh, CDC, the 504 rate is about 4.5, I believe. So, 4.7. 4.77. 4. Anyway. Uh, and then, uh, of course, the investor only has to put, or the borrower only has to put in 10%. Right. So it's, so what's great about it, too, is it's also a longer-term loan. Right. Which is really nice. So you can lock in that 4.7 or something under 5 for a 20-year uh, situation, which is way different than where business has been in terms of yeah, their options. Yeah, and on, on the equipment side, you know, they'll take a look at it. One thing that I think is real key and, and good for everybody is that 
they will they look at them many times on a one on a one time basis. It's not just a cookie cutter, you know. So you have this equipment that's going to last that long. They'll try to give you as long a financing as they can. So it can be up to 20 years. Absolutely, um, and that's that's going to make a di big difference uh, for a lot of people. Um, now, just so you know, there's existing business multi-use buildings where typically would be 50% would be financed by the bank, 40% from the CDC, and a 10% uh, down payment. A new business or single-use building would be 50% from the bank, only 35%. Uh, from the CDC, 15% down payment. Or, or if you're a brand new business and it's a single use uh, building, say something like a, a gas station that can't be reused for another purpose, uh, it would be 30% uh, from the CDC and 20% down. But that's better than your traditional loans uh, where you would have put more than that uh, in the first place. Other questions? Way back. Yeah, um, some of the bankers I've talked to say there are inducements to lend this money, but there seems to be a disconnect with the regulators that come in and um, they have one standard and then uh, it makes it very difficult in, in a conflicting type of situation. Would you comment on that? Absolutely, uh, and there's been a lot of discussion amongst uh, the various regulators and their leaders to, to make sure they're communicating uh, to their examiners uh, what's important. Uh, I think the sad reality is following a crisis everybody gets a little bit nervous, they overreact, uh, and typically a bank examiner isn't going to get fired uh, for saying no. They're going to get fired for saying yes uh, to something. But there is a culture shift going on uh, through the regulators that we've been very sensitive to in Congress that we've encouraged through letters and talking uh, to, to them about you, you really got to talk to your examiners to not be choking off businesses. Yeah. And, and the bill does provide that the regulators um, have to come up, I think, within 60 days of the day that they sign in the bill with underwriting guidelines for small business loans. So there will be some guidance from regulatory agencies as to what those underwriting guidelines are. And the bank complies with those. It's hard to believe that they will have to criticize for making those loans. Exactly. Um, there's no question about it. The bill was signed just a month ago. Since it was signed, uh, because we had run out of funding of some of what we had done through the SBA programs in the Recovery Act, uh, there was already a backlog of approved businesses that couldn't, couldn't move forward. Uh, as a result of this bill signing a month ago, there's already been over 2,000 businesses approved for over a billion dollars of lending. I mean, I think that's indicative of how strong the demand is and how important this was to get done. Uh, it, well, by the banks that were involved, but I'm just saying there were pending loans uh, that have now. They were able to pull the trigger on. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that one of the particular things that you pushed into change was on the refinancing, which we have up there. What about those existing business owners whose property values have not depreciated and may not have that 10% equity anymore? How does that reflect in them being able to do this for us? That's exactly who this is for. So they have a regular commercial real estate loan that was not an SBA 504. They're going to have a hard time refinancing it unless they use something like the 504 program because they may not be able to come up with the additional down payment, but the CDC can help make the difference. So there's less required from that owner or borrower and less from that lender. Uh, as well, and that's why we did it. So it is something that they should look into uh, with their bank as an option. Uh, and not all banks have been SBA banks or are familiar with the 504 program, so it's important that you know about it and that you can pursue that as an option. Now, I, I can speak for uh, people currently under the 504 program that uh, are coming time for uh, renewal and they are now underwater. Uh, Summer Sports, uh, who uh, does the 40 or the 50% guarantee, they are subordinating those. So I, I can speak for PNC Bank that we are refinancing those regardless if they're underwater because we're going to get the subordination of the lien. So we're going to be in first lien position. Mm -hmm. So for, for those circumstances... Um, yeah, being upside down is not, is not the problem. The only thing that would disallow you from inclusion in that 504 program is this is for businesses who've been making their payments. So you've got a viable business, these are performing loans, but because the value of the property is now upside down, let's make it affordable for you to refinance this and stay in them. We're not going to essentially kick the can down the road and help 
businesses that are not viable and, can't, and haven't been able to make their payments. Because that's a government guarantee and we got to protect taxpayers in that regard. But for those who've been making their payments, this is exactly what, who we designed it for. Did any of the uh, community banks who are here want to add any comments that maybe I neglected to mention that you think would be important? Well, I want to thank you all for having me here today. Other questions, by the way, on other subjects? Yeah. The uh, NOL carry back that, that uh, 179 expensing going 500,000 bucks is going to help just about every small business been around. It's a lot of Could you say that louder for everybody? <laughs> in the paperwork that was involved in the 179 for like 100 $20,000 was just ungodly. Uh, and, and, you know, basically the, the real depreciation benefit does not come for a forklift truck, which is spent $12,000 on. The real, the, the taxable benefit is for new plants and machinery and stuff. that is very much more than $500,000. Uh, it is a, a much more logical way of doing it. And, and, and somebody thought of that one, uh, hit it right on the head. I mean, Congratulations. Well, thank you. I'm so glad to hear that. I mean, a number of us have been listening to what we've heard from some of you here, but from the forums that we've been out doing and bringing that back and, and uh, trying to make sure we're creating an environment for growth because we do get it's the private sector, not government, that drives job growth, but we can create an environment that supports your success. Yes? Is there, is there any, you know, we're going to have all these engineers now because you're funding all the, all the college grants, but they don't have anything to do because the R&D credits were killed 10 years ago. Uh, is there, is, you know, the reason why we don't have battery technology is because it, they, they give tax credits to, 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 to finance the, the R&D overseas and we, we've taken it away from, uh, from in-house sourcing here. Uh, is, there, you know, is there anything on the horizon for this? I mean, to, well, there is. Like some of these DOE grants now are being uh, used by a lot of domestic uh, producers and it is making a big difference. Uh, and we're essentially catching up. There were other countries who were way ahead of us who early on had energy plans and vision and were funding uh, development in other countries and we weren't doing it. Uh, and we did have some grants available, but to your point, uh, how you do those programs and if they're too cumbersome to work through, people just weren't taking advantage of them. And so there's been a real attention. Have you ever seen these grants? I'm sorry? Have you ever seen one of the requirements for these grants on like Argonne or like whatever? I mean, it's challenging. He's got a software company right over here. I mean, it, 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 there's no way you could fill out the grants. It would cost you, you would have to hire somebody. Well, well, it is changing because now companies right here have participated and are getting some of those grants. So for a long time, we went through a number of years that there just weren't even, no one was getting them in the country, and now they are happening all over. So there has been an effort uh, under the new uh, Secretary of Energy to, to, to get those dollars into the hands of our innovators and our entrepreneurs who need them uh, so we can bring better technology and new technology to market, compete in the global market, and win. And there's some help for people that have a, uh, are challenged in filling out grants, the uh, uh, Harper Small Business Development Center. Any yes. Small, any SBDCs around will definitely help you do that. And, and we'll help too. We'll, we'll hook you up with some of the folks at the Department of Energy who attend when I do my forums. By the way, when I started them, people didn't know what I was doing. And now I have members all over the country are saying, can you give me that template? And who are you inviting? And they're doing them all over the country. Um, because I knew there was a disconnect. People didn't even realize some of these resources were there in a place uh, to help them succeed. Uh, and it is, it is making a difference. But let us know if you've got questions too, and we'll get you connected to the right resource. Uh, at the DOE. Their webinars are extremely helpful uh, to businesses. Thank you all so much. It's an honor to serve you in Congress. Since the, um, there are a number of SBA uh, lenders that are in the room, I'd like to ask if you would stand and introduce yourself to the group so that if anybody has a need, uh, they'll know who to go to. We can start at this table here. Uh, Steve Callahan, uh, Burlington Bank, Hoffman Bank. Okay. Next table. Uh, Burke Room, Barrington Bank and Trust, Hoffman Estates Community Bank. Rick Wolcott, the same two great things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the table in the back. Uh, Jeff T from Diamond Bank. This table here. Alex Guerrero, Harris Bank. Ryan Badalamenti, PNC Bank. 
Roundtable? Uh, Joe Warner, Charter National Bank.